All right, back to the Africa CEO Forum. As you heard, Aliko Dangote say during his chat uh, that intra-Africa trade is at 16% compared to much higher figures for North America, Europe, Asia. Boosting trade will require much more efficient ports. We spoke to Tejwaswi uh, Avasarala, who is the deputy CEO at Lagos Free Zone, uh, Tolaram Africa, uh, in Kigali. Can you explain to people, I guess, the existence of the Lekki, Lagos Free Trade Zone and I guess you know your operations and what, what it is that you provide to, the, to to Lagos and beyond. Thanks for speaking to us, Rotus. So Lagos Free Zone is uh, being developed as the first privately owned port-based industrial zone in Nigeria. Uh, we completed the Lego the land acquisition process in 2012, and the port financial closure was achieved in 2020, which is when we actively started promoting the free zone because the port was central to our uh, value proposition that we wanted to offer to the tenants inside the free zone. So it's a modern port-based industrial zone which offers three things essentially. Uh, a fully integrated deep sea port, which is the deepest port of Nigeria today. We also offer plug-and-play industrial ecosystem uh, with all the elements of manufacturing and trade that you need, whether it is reliable power, security, ready to lease factories and warehouses and so on and so forth. And all of this uh, in a fully functional ecosystem where we as the zone developer take the entire infrastructure developmental risk so that you can mobilize your manpower and machinery and start uh, hitting the ground running. So that's the value proposition. Fantastic. Now, help us clear something up because um, a lot of folks seem to think that the Dangote by its way is here at the uh, at the uh, the summit, the Africa CEO summit. That you're both in the same zone. Can you clear up um, that that for a lot of our, our viewers? Sure. So both the Dangote petrochemical and the refinery complex, as well as the Lagos Free Zone and Lakey Port, are located in what is loosely called Lakey area. Uh, that entire Lakey area has been identified by Lagos state government to drive the industrial agenda for the next 20 to 30 years because the existing industrial pockets are chock-a-block. So that entire area is has three or four different free zones. Ours is called Lagos Free Zone and that is where the Lakey Deep Sea Port is uh, situated in. Now, um, as far as um, value proposition, what you offer, the services and so on, what would differentiate your zone from others? So we, uh, the integration with the deep sea port is the first unique uh, feature. Uh, for any manufacturing or trading operator, cost of logistics is very, very directly related to the distance uh, uh, from the port that you import from. So for any tenant inside the free zone who is using Lakey port, you are basically located less than a five kilometer radius from the deepest port of Nigeria. So that reduces your total cost of logistics, which is an advantage that you keep uh, benefiting from throughout your project life cycle. And the other feature is also the fact that it is being developed by Tolaram. Lagos Free Zone is owned and promoted by Tolaram, which is uh, a Singaporean headquartered company having presence in Nigeria for the last 50 years with many successful consumer products uh, in, the, in the market like Indomie, Hypo, Dano Milk, uh, Colgate and Kellogg's products and so on and so forth. So we bring in uh, the expertise and perspective of a manufacturing operator and at the same time bring in the learnings that we had from delivering a complex infrastructure project like Lakey Port and blend in the two experiences into de de delivering a world-class industrial ecosystem which is essentially aiming to lower the barriers of doing business and providing a plug-and-play ecosystem and we are confident of uh, delivering that, uh, uh, you know, in comparison to the other alternatives because we know Nigeria very intricately ourselves as a manufacturer. Speaking of plug and play and, you know, lowering barriers and, you know, efficiency and all that, there's been a lot of talk about technology here at this Africa CEO Forum in, in Kigali. Uh, how, how are you utilizing technology, I guess, in your operations? Well, so uh, two examples, right? On the port side, uh, Lakey Port has the most uh, high speed and modern scanners that you need to increase the throughput from the terminal and reduce the human intervention required for custom clearance processes. So that is directly speaking to unlocking a higher degree of productivity at the terminal itself. And within the free zone, technology is again front and center of how we want to deliver services and quality of experience to our tenants. So the entire interface between our tenants and our regulators happens on a 
a very transparent workflow system that we have developed for an online engagement so that it reduces the bureaucracy and the, the weight of moving papers, reduces the time of interaction and increases the productivity. You mentioned that you know you know Nigeria intricately um, over the past year, because of course this new administration is coming up on a new year. How um, have you navigated the economic backdrop of Nigeria in terms of your operations? So I think the past one one and a half year, after uh, a lot of much required reforms uh, had been executed, were obviously difficult for everybody, including us. Uh, currency devaluation is something that uh, all our investors, whenever we are speaking to uh, to external parties to attract them to come to Nigeria, that remains one of the top of uh, top of their concerns list uh, because any investor wants a macro policy stability for a few years before they want to commit FDI into a new country. Uh, so that is not immune uh, to to the free zone uh, as well because our business is primarily promoting the free zone for attracting more investments into the country and also enabling the existing companies within Nigeria to benefit from this port-based industrial zone. So, uh, but having said that, what I would also say is those reforms, as difficult as they may have been, uh, I think the market has seen them as necessary evil uh, and, and everyone has kind of taken them on board as a short-term pain to unlock long-term stability. And that is also what we see in the increased traction that we have seen uh, over the last uh, six to nine months in terms of our inquiries, in terms of our interest that we garner in, uh, through various channels when we interact with our prospects. So uh, I would like to believe that uh, the worst of volatility is behind us. And I think that is going to uh, hopefully open up uh, the incoming investments into Nigeria. Well, speaking of which, one more question for you. I guess, what does the future hold? Any future investments? How, what's your outlook as far as the future is concerned? Well, uh, from, our, from our standpoint, sustainability has always been one of the important pillars uh, in, in terms of not just doing the right thing, but also doing it uh, in, in a responsible way so that we can create long-term sustainable value. So everything that we are doing at the free zone, our sustainability agenda is uh, driving all our decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, about uh, 5 to 7 percent of our total area is allocated towards blue and green cover. Uh, we also uh, put a very high emphasis on making sure that the development is very equitable, uh, encouraging uh, uh, you know, local manpower uh, to the extent possible, enabling upskilling the talent available within the Lagos state in the nearby communities, and also uh, for an, from an environmental standpoint, we have very clear targets in terms of uh, reducing our uh, water dependence uh, in terms of groundwater, uh, becoming uh, carbon neutral uh, within the next uh, 2030 is when we hope to uh, to be net zero. Uh, and, and beyond that, our targets are to become net positive in terms of increasing our reliability on renewables. So I think uh, future, uh, I would say, holds a more and more uh, sustainable drive to support the industrialization and localization of value chains within Nigeria. Thank you for talking to Arise News. Thank you, Rotus. Thank you for speaking to us.